From the beginning, I was hearing this movie called The Indian John Wick, which did not fill me with optimism. However, I gave it a chance, and it wasn't bad. It's funny that this was compared to John Wick. I can see why, because there are definitely very similar thematic elements. Revenge, well, revenge. I mean, that's basically, that's basically what, especially the first John Wick was about revenge. And this movie as well was about this guy's quest for revenge for things that happened in his childhood. Little by little, as the story unfolds, you see more and more of what happened that caused these tremendous emotional scars within him and gave him this drive to go after the people responsible. In that regard, it's, it's similar. Some of the fight choreography reminded me a bit of John Wick. There is a dog. Yes, there is. But I mean, I, I, I think that's really as close as they get to each other. And there are a lot of other films that are that type of story. So uh, I don't know. I definitely enjoyed this much more than John Wick 3 and 4 for sure. The fight choreography was well done. There were indeed moments though where I could see that the person swung high so the guy could duck, that sort of thing. I know it's difficult to avoid that, but it does kind of grate on my nerves a little bit because it stands out, it's so obvious. However, most of the choreography or the fight choreography, the action scenes, when they were happening, it, I. I think it was done with like a handheld cam, you know, like uh, what I mentioned in a previous review for Parasite the Grey. So I feel like that type of approach to filming a fight scene can help mitigate those sorts of issues that can stand out because it took a bit into the movie before I could see these these things happening in a fight scene. Now, granted, this movie, while it does have quite a bit of action and fighting, it's not nonstop action. It's not like John Wick 3 and 4. You have quite a bit of downtime. There's also a period where the character kind of has to gather his strength again and get ready to proceed with his plan. And there are moments of, uh, connection between certain characters, the main character and others around him. And also it's showing you as he's inserting himself little by little into this organization where he wants to find the people or be have access to the people that he wants to get his revenge on. I like that they took their time letting you know or showing you what had happened. And by the time you see the full story, because up till that point, you were only seeing snatches, very quick glimpses of just like maybe a bloody hand or someone screaming or fire. And you didn't really know exactly what it was. And then you find out as it's completely revealed exactly what it was that he witnessed, that he experienced, and oh, it was so sad. <laughs> it was really, really sad. And up until that point, I was just feeling kind of, okay, he witnessed something bad happening and he's got this, you know, he he's on a revenge quest, all right. But it wasn't until I saw what he actually witnessed that it really made it so much more impactful, this anguish that he was dealing with. And I thought that was very well done. I do have a few cons. I'll save that for towards the end. I'm going to check back through my notes. Oh, it's funny. The comparison to John Wick, there was a reference to John Wick. It was uh, regarding a gun that he was looking to purchase. And they mentioned something about this is the John Wick gun. It's it's like the in the movie, except it was made in China. <laughs> This is kind of funny. That was one tiny little laugh out loud moment. There was also another laugh out. Well, it was laugh out loud for me. There were other people that laughed too, actually. And it was a moment where, and I'm not going to go into details, but it's a moment where a character attempts to do something that's very cliche in action films, and it doesn't quite go as expected. <laughs> <laughs> so that made, that made me laugh. I liked that it subverted my expectation. Kind of helps separate it from some of the more generic type of 
action, you know, movies and, and things like that. So yeah, that went under the pros, unexpected events that happened. There were things that occurred uh, along his journey that I did not expect. Uh, things didn't go his way when I thought maybe it would, and we're going to have this typical da 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 is going to happen, blah, blah, blah. No, that, that wasn't necessarily what happened. There were some predictable things because it was following a formula, a revenge story formula. So they had to pace it that way. They had to have things flow that way so that this this ultimate revenge can happen it was certainly nothing that was a detriment to me. But um, I did like the moments of unexpectedness that occurred. I also liked how shots were framed. It was very beautiful, actually. Even some of the shots of violence and fighting and moments leading up to that, the way certain things were captured, like there is one scene where these characters that are facing off against each other, their reflections are captured in like these hanging mirrors or something these like circular mirrors that are hanging from the wall and they're just kind of you know doing this thing and you can see the reflection of the characters I thought that was really interesting this was shot very very well and kudos to the cinematographer the or the director of photography or whatever this is Dev Patel's first directed movie and I feel like he did a phenomenal job. This was a competently made film, despite some of the cons that I'll touch on after a bit. As far as the action scenes or the killing scenes, let's say, oh, some of the kills were gnarly, gnarly. There was a scene involving a knife in a neck and I cringed inside so hard, especially the way they were showing it happen. That was, it was a little unique and it was really like, it, it just, it didn't hold back. I was impressed with, uh, <laughs> with that particular scene. Well, you know, I mean, someone's being brutally killed, but the way in which it happened in this scene and the way it was shot, I was impressed with it. So yeah, if you like action flicks, if you like revenge flicks, I think you will enjoy this. There were some things that were kind of typically convenient or not necessarily something that I could really believe happened. One was a, well, a couple of them took place during the same scene. A character, a character is witnessing something. They're hiding. Excuse the dogs. They're hiding. They're from, they're a distance away from what it is they're looking at. And yet they were able to read a name tag. And it wasn't like a big, huge name tag. It was a small name tag. They were able to read that. They were also able to very clearly see a symbol on it, like a matchbox case the distance that this person was from those <laughs> the distance that this person was from those items there's no way they would have been able to clearly see these things so that was a bit of an issue yes the character needed to be able to see these things because it did come into play later on in their life but it really stretched the limits of my ability to suspend disbelief. There's no way this person could have clearly read the name tag or seen this symbol on the matchbox. So that was eh. Then there were also, there were some side characters that one of them, I'm, well, both of them actually, I'm not exactly sure the purpose of these people because they don't really have anything important to do as far as the story. I mean, there's some, there's, well, I take that back. One of them does do something kind of important, but I didn't really, I mean, there was one of them I felt a little bit of an emotional connection to, but we weren't exposed to them long enough to really have that that hook of emotional connection. And this other person, I like what was, I didn't really get the point of this person very much, except maybe they served as a connector between one of the characters and another group of characters to kind of bring them together. Maybe, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. That's a very minor complaint though. Something I forgot to mention that I couldn't help but notice was there is a particular part where the main character encounters a group of people that had been very briefly mentioned earlier in the film. And as soon as I heard this very brief mention of them, which 
felt strange. It felt like it, it stuck out like a sore thumb. But as soon as I heard mention of it, I knew that this group of people was going to come into play. And they did. It was part of his character's storyline as far as the journey that he went on. But this part of the storyline as far as these particular people, it didn't feel like it was something that actually fit very well in the story. It felt like it was something that was specifically shoehorned in. Now, Dev Patel himself, he has Indian ethnicity, but he's British. And so it really felt like this part of the storyline came from that influence. And, you know, there are certain hot button topics that are very popular right now. And he wrote this story. So that part of Monkey Man felt like something that didn't quite fit into place organically. It did feel like something that was intentionally inserted. And so of the entire film, that's really the one main part that just didn't come across as authentic and genuine. And it was enough that I noticed it. I didn't write it down and completely forgot to mention it during my video review, but it did occur to me later. So I wanted to add this in. Okay, back to the video. The other issues that I did have was towards the end, as things are going down, something happens to make a crowd of people disperse because, well, what happened would make them disperse very far away, as in completely out of the location, completely away. But the important characters that are being tracked down are still in the vicinity. And that, that didn't really, pretty convenient, but I couldn't really buy into that either. It's not the biggest deal, honestly, it, it really isn't. But these were just some things that did end up in the con category for me. It, it really is, it's so tiny. It was nothing that aggravated me to the point that I was rolling my eyes or I was super annoyed or anything like this. I definitely do not feel like this movie was a waste of my time. If you like this genre of film, I think you will really appreciate this. If you're a fan of Dev Patel, I think you will definitely appreciate this. I'm glad I took the time to check it out. And I'm filming this review very quickly because I have to go out of town tomorrow. So I wanted to be able to get this done before that happened. I was hoping to see the omen before I left. I could have done a double feature, but I have to go to bed super early. Well, super early for me. So I didn't want to stay out as late as I would have had to stay out if I was going to watch that. I could have gone straight from Monkey Man to The L Omen. But if I'd done that, I would still be at the movie theater and I'd be getting back super late. I'll try to catch that maybe when I'm out of town. We'll see. Anyway, that's all I can think to say about Monkey Man. Curious to hear your thoughts if you check it out. And that's it for this one, you guys. Later.